The Compare To Podcast is part of the Spark Media Network, now available on the Edify Podcast app. Grab the Edify app in your Google Play Store or on the Apple Podcasts app. You will be so glad you did. Hey there, friends. Heather Creekmore here. I'm so glad you're listening to the Compare To Show today. Today, we're going to talk about something you may not be expecting. And that is, we're going to talk about how your body image issues may connect, they may not, but for some of you, this is going to definitely ring true, may connect to how you prepare your house for company. Oh, am I touching any sore spots right now? Oh, friends. I was the crazy cleanup lady, the scour the baseboards, scour the toilets, uh, cleanup lady before people would come over. And I mean, even to the extent of, I'm going to stop and pick that up from you later. Ah, must clean the house. That was my response. But God has done a major work in my life in this area. And now I see how connected that work was to my body image issues and my journey out of really body image bondage. So if this resonates with you, I think you are in for a treat today. I hope you enjoy today's show. Let's get to it. Welcome to Compare to Who, the podcast to help you make peace with your body so you can savor God's rest and feel his love. If you're tired of fighting body image the world's way, Compare to Who is the show for you. You've likely heard lots of talk about loving your body, but my goal is different. Striving to fall in love with stretch marks and cellulite is a little silly to me. Instead, I want to encourage you and remind you with the truth of scripture that you are seen, you are known, and you are loved no matter what your size or shape. Here, the pressure is off. If you're looking for real talk, biblical encouragement, and regular reminders that God loves you and you're not alone, you've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy today's show and hey, tell a friend about it. Okay, so literally seven years ago, I wrote a blog post called How Cleaning Your House Like Crazy Connects to Your Body Image. And for a very long time, (laughs) this blog post got more attention than anything else I had written. And in some ways, that hurt my feelings a little bit because I was like, wait a second here. I thought people wanted body image help, (laughs) but they're not reading that stuff. They want to know how it connects to going into crazy cleaning Nazi mode before people come over or I don't know, maybe even all the time. And maybe, maybe you are the person that always likes to have our house clean just in case. Uh, And if you do, I think you are going to enjoy our conversation today. So let me just give you a little bit of my history with this. Okay. So growing up, my mom was very particular about the way the house was before anyone came over. And if I'm honest, I didn't really like to have friends over that much because I knew she was going to go into crazy cleanup mode and that was going to make my life difficult. And so I was like, why bother? It's easier to go to someone else's house. And so part of me vowed that I would never be like that, right? You know, that thing we do where we say, oh, I'll never act like my mom. And then, (laughs) and then it happened. Then we actually put ourselves in the position where we were holding church in our home. So my husband planted a church outside of Dallas, Texas, so about 12, 13 years ago now. And we were opening our home up as a church every single week. Now, let me just give you a full picture of what that looked like. So we had little kids. And I think we had, actually it wasn't 13 years ago, it was just about 10 years ago, because my youngest was, um, I was pregnant with him. And then I had a one-year-old, and then I had a three-year-old, and then I had a four-year-old. So any of you that have had 
people of that age living under your roof, you know that they are not the neatest. And they're also not the most conscientious about picking up after themselves, you know, when they eat or when they play with things. So I had my hands full. So we had a lot of little kids. I'm pregnant and we are having church in our house. So upstairs was used because that was the nursery for our church. And so we locked the kids' bedroom doors, but had kind of like a play area upstairs that had to be clean and neat for all these other families' little kids to play in. Our garage was where the older kids, really just elementary age kids, met. We had to clean out the garage, hide the power tools. (laughs) And then our main portion of our home, our, our living room and our kitchen, were where we had service and then some fellowship and snacks afterwards. So when I say my whole house had to be clean for church every Sunday, I do mean my whole house, like short of my master bedroom that was... (laughs) chaotic mess where I was hiding things and the door locked. Uh, Pretty much the whole place had to be ready to accommodate the people from our growing new church. And then there's this whole added element of my body image issues and thinking that how people see my home is really how they see me. And then I had an extra element of issues because I felt like as a pastor's wife, it was part of my responsibility to have this beautiful home and for everyone to see what a great wife I was because I could keep my house so clean. Yeah, all this extra pressure. And so every Sunday, oh, it was chaos. You guys, it was so hard. It was so awful in retrospect. Every Sunday, I was cleaning my house like a crazy person and yelling at my very little kids because, you know, they would get the toy out that I just put away or they would take the cushion off the couch that I just replaced and move the pillows and or use the bathroom. Um, Oh, (laughs) possibilities were limitless as to ways they could, quote unquote, ruin the progress I had made. And some of you know exactly what I mean when I say that. So growing up, my mom would put rooms off limits. That was the word she used. So if she cleaned the bathroom, she'd be like, it's off limits. You can't use that bathroom. Or if she cleaned another space, it's off limits. But I was trying very hard not to do that. And yet at the same time, everything in my heart was crying, no, don't use the bathroom. It's off limits. (laughs) I had this internal dilemma over what was going on, but um, was very much operating in my programming of we need to have a perfect house. People cannot see that we actually live here, (laughs) which is a revelation I had. Again, just a couple years ago, I put it on Instagram, but I was cleaning my house for Christmas party. And I'll be honest with you, like I had made great progress in this arena, but at this point we had moved to a new place and this was kind of like the first thing I was hosting for a group of people that I didn't really know all that well. And I think that that made my insecurities come out a little bit more. And so suddenly I found myself right back into the like cleaning the house so it's spotless and perfect place. And as I was doing it, I was like, this is so ridiculous. Why am I trying to make it look like no one lives here? Like, why is that the goal to me? <laughs> like, I'm having this big holiday party, big Christmas party, but when you come in, I want to make sure that you feel like we don't actually live here. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy in a way. <laughs> it's definitely crazy in a way. But I, I think you can relate to what I'm saying. But here's what God started to do. Well, quite honestly, what happened was one day, oh, about three minutes before the first uh, attendees of our church were, were going to ring the doorbell, I saw my husband's glass of water sitting on the counter. And I saw my one-year-old reach up for it. And it's like it happened in slow motion. And I heard him say, like, wah-wah, and like, go for it. And you know what happened next. The glass of water crashed onto our tile floor. A thousand pieces of glass are everywhere. Not only are things a mess, (laughs) but now we have like an actual hazard with glass shards everywhere. And that was the breaking point 
that was that was the I can no longer control everything and keep everything perfect. That was also the point where my husband got some good counsel from someone who said, "Dude, you have to move your church out of your home." And so we we found an alternate place to meet very quickly and that took some pressure off. But none of that really changes what God was doing in my heart to show me how these issues that I had around what other people thought of me physically, how they just connected so easily and so smoothly with what I was doing in my home and the image I was trying to portray in my home and how I was trying to, oh, here's this word again, control what people thought of me by controlling what people thought of my home. Now, quite honestly, I have no control over what other people think, right? But somehow I had confused myself or deceived myself into believing that if my house looked perfect, then they'd have nothing to criticize. Then they would approve of me. And I don't know if that statement like resonated with you at all for your physical home, But let me tell you, I think I did the exact same thing with my body. I thought if I could get my body perfect, you know, perfect is so subjective, right? But perfect according to my own standard, then no one would have anything to criticize. No one could ever disapprove of me, right? Because how how could they? How could they criticize me? I had done everything perfectly. My body was acceptable. My body was, you know, I guess, curated or perfected to be approved of. And then the most disappointing thing (laughs) that could happen is when they still didn't approve of me or still didn't like me. And I'll share more about that right after this break. Hey, hey there, friend. Are we email friends yet? Because if not, we really should be. Don't you think it's about time? (laughs) Seriously, you can head on over to comparedtowho.me and you can get my free five-day body image email challenge. What is a five-day body image email challenge? Well, for five days in a row, I'm going to send you messages just to kind of get you thinking about your body image in a completely different and hopefully helpful gospel-centered way. I want to see you find body image freedom And the best place to start is by becoming my email friend so we can connect that way and I can encourage you right in your inbox. So go to comparetoyou.me, take the free five-day email challenge, and I can't wait to connect with you there. Okay, so back to talking about what God showed me between the connection of my body image issues and trying to have a house, a clean enough house that everyone would always approve of. So part of my challenge in believing that I could control other people's opinions of me by controlling their opinion of my home and controlling their opinion of my body is, like I said before, I don't actually have the power to control anyone's opinion. And quite honestly, on our church planting journey, that was revealed to me in very obvious ways over and over and over again, because in ministry, things are messy and people come to your church and they're all excited and they're your best friend forever. And then they leave your church because they're disappointed in something about you or something about the church or something about your husband if you're the pastor's wife. And that was a hard lesson for me over and over and over again, because somehow still in the back of my mind, in my heart, I thought I could make you like me. You know what, friends, I'll be honest, that's even hard as a podcaster and an author, right? I mean, it's hard for all of us in all areas, right? We do these things thinking I can make you like me. And at the end of the day, we have to remember we have no control over that. And then I also think it's comforting to remember that not everyone liked Jesus. 
And his goal in life was really not to make people like him. I mean, isn't that kind of strange to think about? Like that wasn't Jesus's goal. He didn't come to be likable, (laughs) to get likes on social media, to have people approve of him, right? There's a difference between the truth and loving people well and being accepted and approved of. And especially, friends, if we are trying to be Christians, if we're trying to be Christ followers in this world, this culture that is really jacked up a lot of the time, whoo, it's going to be hard to make choices that are going to lead us directly to a place where we are not approved of or accepted of. But that's a little bit of an aside. Let's go back to you and your house. Right? I think I think we make the same mistake in over cleaning or over preparing for guests as we do in over controlling, over manipulating our bodies and what they look like. And that mistake is that we don't recognize where our real value comes from. See, we tend to still believe that we are valuable to people if we look like we should be valuable. And the same thing applies to our homes. We believe that if people see what great homemakers we are, then they will love or admire us more. And so a lot of this is just taking the pressure off of ourselves to try to impress others, right? It's all image management. We stress clean, because of image management, and we change clothes 50 times before church because of image management, and we don't eat all the things that we think are bad for us to eat for six weeks before vacation because we want the vacation pictures to look a certain way because of image management. And friends, we are made in the image of God. Guess what? That is not an image that needs to be managed. I don't know if you ever thought about that before, but these images of ourselves that we try to manage and manipulate and mold, really when we're doing that, when we're managing, manipulating and molding, we're not actually trying to look more like Jesus most of the time. <laughs> we're not, we're not like saying, oh God, take my image and make me look even more like you. I mean, reality is the Bible tells us in Isaiah that Jesus wasn't attractive, right? That there was nothing physically appealing about the way Jesus looked. So sorry, Jonathan Rumi from The Chosen and Jim Caviezel from like The Passion. Like, no, Jesus wasn't hot. And yet, and yet we know that, like we know that example. And yet we still think that being hotter, being thinner, being more beautiful, having a better whatever body part insert here would make us better image bearers for God. No, no. If you've never heard me talk about the mirror tilt, okay, you just go on YouTube and look up Heather Creekmore compared to a mirror tilt. And you can watch me do it live at a, a group I was speaking to a couple years ago. But, but our, our goal in life isn't to perfect our image. In fact, where we find real life The kind of life I think Jesus died to give us is when we can be authentic and stop trying to be the image of, I'm just going to say it, the image of our idols, right? Stop trying to conform our image into the image of idols. Stop making little golden calves out of ourselves, quite honestly. And when we can be our authentic selves as image bearers of God, And friends, that takes some bravery, okay? Just like it takes bravery for some of you to leave the house without makeup, it takes bravery for some of you that are on an intuitive eating journey to not weigh yourself. It takes bravery for some of you that are used to looking in the mirror all the time, 24-7, body checking every reflective glass you see to stop doing that. It takes bravery 
to stop obsessively cleaning your house. Now, let me be clear. I am not advocating for grossness, okay? If you are having people over, clean your bathroom, seriously, clean the kitchen if you're preparing food. Like, I think those are good, healthy practices. <laughs> like, there's, there's a standard of hygiene that I appreciate someone considering when I go to their home. Okay, but do the baseboards have to be clean? No. Does every dish in the sink need to be invisible? Probably not. If your laundry basket is on the couch when a friend stops by, how much more comfortable does she feel coming into your home seeing, oh, they dirty clothes just like we do, (laughs) right? I mean, again, it's so silly how we think we have to show ourselves perfectly to other people. And then the most ironic thing is most people aren't attracted to us because of perfection. In fact, more often that separates us that repels other people from us because they're like, "Ugh, you're too perfect. I don't, I can't be around you." <laughs> like, "Ugh, I just I can't stand to be with someone that makes me feel so imperfect all the time." And it's just the reality, right? So friends, what would it look like to let someone stop by your home without it being perfect? What would it look like to have people over and not have everything in place and just so and sparkling and quite candidly like your house never ever looks at any other time except for when people come over that we were joking with our small group this week um and they asked if I could host this week and I was like yeah sure because I do need to clean and I haven't done it in a while and then one of the other women was like oh well maybe we should clean and host it again because you know then our house would be really really clean at that point and I mean it's you know it's true it, we do we it's there's a courtesy involved with cleaning for others but then there's a line we can cross right just like there's a courtesy involved with putting on clothing <laughs> to, taking your pajamas off when you go to target and putting on real clothes like it's kind of a courtesy like okay i'm going to show up in the world as you know as, as an adult and if you wear your pajamas to target i'm sorry this is nothing personal but i actually don't think anyone listening to this show does that because that's <laughs> so not consistent with body image issues but anyway that's an aside um but there's there's a courtesy level of cleaning, respecting, that kind of thing. And then there's an over the top. I'm angry all day preparing for this. My kids are tense because I'm yelling because everything has to be perfect. And there is so much skin in the game. I have so much stake in whether or not you think my house is perfect, whether or not you find my house acceptable. That is just a stressful situation to try to invite people over. And I think that's where we get too often. We shut ourselves off from hospitality because we don't even want to deal with the cleaning, right? Ah, And yet we miss out on real relationships when we're afraid to have people over. We miss out on a beautiful thing of connecting with others when we won't let anyone into our homes. We won't let anyone in to our private sanctuaries. And friends, it's the same thing with our body image issues. We miss out on connecting with others when all we want others to see is an image of ourselves and we won't let them see the genuine us. We won't talk about the things we're struggling with. We try to present ourselves as perfect and have it all together when in truth we might feel like we're a mess on the inside. So today, if any of this resonated with you, I have a challenge for you. Challenge one is I want you to think today about whether or not there's been a connection for you between how you relate to your home. Maybe it's not cleaning. Maybe it's decorating. Maybe you didn't want to have anyone over until you had like all your walls painted or, you know, a room redone or remodeled or new furniture, whatever it may be. So think about how your body image issues may be connecting now or have connected to your house and the way you present your home. And then I want to challenge you, have someone over, invite people over without everything being perfect and just see how it feels. It's kind of like going to the store without makeup for the first time. You're going to feel like everyone is staring at you, but then you actually experience it and you're like, oh, no one stopped me and said, ooh, hideous ogre, get out of the store, right? No one even 
notices. And the same thing I believe you'll find if you have people over to your home and just let them in to your real life. Well, I hope something from today's episode has encouraged you to stop comparing and start living. Hey, join our Patreon community if you're interested in connecting once a month on a Zoom call. It's so much fun. I love connecting with women in this way. So go to compare to me slash podcast and look for information on how to join the Patreon community. There's bonus content there too. So it's lots of fun. Well, thanks for listening today. We'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Oh, hey there, before you go, if something from today's show blessed you, may I ask a huge favor, leave a review on your favorite platform. Seeing your five-star reviews is a huge encouragement to me. Not sure how to do it? You can go to compare to who.me slash podcast, scroll to the bottom, and you'll find all the information. And while you're at compare to who.me, check out some of the more than 500 articles on there about body image, comparison, all the things you're thinking about. Plus, you can find out more about my books, or you can grab a time for a free 10 minute call to see if coaching is right for you. I'm so honored to be a part of your journey out of body image and comparison frustration. And I can't wait to hear how God is working to set you free.